Let's get right into it. They say genius is next to madness, but no one told you madness could involve sleeping in a chair for exactly 26 minutes or talking to an invisible audience while making coffee at 3 a.m. Today, we're counting down the strangest, most inexplicable habits of some of the brightest minds in history and science. And just so you know, these aren't your average wake up at 5 a.m. productivity hacks. These are the kind of quirks that make you wonder if genius is less about brain power and more about sheer weirdness. Number eight, the polyphasic sleep puzzle. Imagine waking up five times a day on purpose, not because you're anxious, not because your neighbor's dog won't shut up, but because you believe your brain works better in fragmented chunks. Some historical geniuses, Leonardo da Vinci is often rumored among them, practiced something called polyphasic sleep, where instead of one long rest, you take multiple short naps spread evenly across the day. The science here is patchy. Supporters claim it keeps you in a constant semi-dream state where creativity flows like a busted fire hydrant. Critics say it's basically jet lag on steroids, slowly frying your reaction time. But here's the kicker. EEG scans of some modern polyphasic sleepers show unusual bursts of REM activity that don't follow the typical 90-minute cycle. In other words, the brain is breaking its own rules. Whether this is a genius brain optimizing itself or just inventing a very slow form of torture is still unclear. But hey, nothing says I'm smarter than you like being wide awake at 2.17 a.m. for absolutely no reason. Number seven, the question-answer monologue. Some geniuses don't just think out loud. They debate with themselves in full sentences, out loud, sometimes for hours. And no, this isn't just muttering, where did I put my keys? This is structured argument. Question, counterpoint, rebuttal, conclusion. Psychologists studying highly creative problem solvers have found that this externalized thinking, literally speaking thoughts as if to an audience, can engage different neural pathways than silent thinking. The verbal loop forces the brain to organize chaotic ideas into linear speech, making connections that might otherwise slip by unnoticed. Einstein reportedly did this while walking, muttering complex physics equations to himself as if presenting to a class only he could see. Was it genius? Was it eccentricity? Probably both. Either way, if you've ever had a full-blown TED Talk in your kitchen while making noodles, you might be onto something. Number six, the walking desk obsession. Long before Silicon Valley marketed treadmills for productivity, certain scientists and writers were already pacing their way through ideas. Literally, Vladimir Nabokov drafted entire novels while walking in circles. Nikola Tesla was supposedly walk 8 to 10 miles every evening, stopping only to jot down sudden bursts of inspiration. Research on locomotion-induced creativity shows that moderate physical movement increases blood flow to the brain's prefrontal cortex, the part responsible for complex thought and problem solving. In some cases, EEG readings reveal heightened gamma wave activity linked to moments of insight during steady walking. So while the rest of us are stuck staring at blinking cursors, some geniuses have been quietly rewriting history, one lap around the room at a time. The only downside? your Fitbit will think you're training for a marathon instead of inventing something world-changing. Number five, the food fixation ritual. Some geniuses don't just eat. They treat meals like science experiments. Nikola Tesla had an odd fixation on repetitive meals, often eating the same exact dinner every night. A bowl of soup, a plate of vegetables, and precisely two slices of bread. Meanwhile, the mathematician Paul Erdos famously powered himself with massive amounts of coffee and amphetamines, claiming they kept the proofs flowing. Modern neuroscience shows that the dopaminergic reward system in the brain, the same one that feels obsessive focus, can be triggered by food rituals. By locking diet into a predictable routine, these individuals free up cognitive energy for creative work instead of wasting mental bandwidth on what should I eat today? The trade-off? You might invent the next big thing, but you'll probably hate restaurant menus for life.
Number 4. The Object Fidget Phenomenon Before fidget spinners became a playground fad, a surprising number of innovators kept a thinking object within reach. Something small they could roll, tab, or twist during deep work. Inventor Thomas Edison reportedly played with ball bearings in his hand while brainstorming. Writer Samuel Beckett fiddled endlessly with paper clips during pauses in conversation. Cognitive studies suggest that this kind of self-generated tactile stimulation can help regulate arousal levels in the brain, keeping you alert without tipping into anxiety. It's a bit like giving your nervous system a pacifier, except instead of a baby's binky, it's a brass gear, a stone, or whatever random object happens to live in your desk drawer. The habit looks strange, sure, but maybe your next great idea is hiding in the rhythm of your tapping fingers. Number 3. The Isolation Chamber Effect While most of us feel cabin fever after a day alone, some geniuses actively seek total sensory isolation to do their best thinking. Mathematician Grigory Perelman, who famously solved the Poincaré conjecture, worked for years in near-complete seclusion, rarely speaking to anyone outside his tiny circle. Neuroscience on sensory deprivation shows that removing external input can temporarily heighten internal cognitive activity, allowing for unusually deep focus. The brain, starved of stimuli, begins to amplify its own internal signals, which can be a goldmine for abstract reasoning. Of course, this approach comes with side effects, social awkwardness, a warped sense of time, and the occasional urge to explain topology to your plan house. Number two, the idea hoarding compulsion. Some geniuses don't just keep notes, they create entire fortresses of half-finished ideas. Leonardo da Vinci left behind thousands of pages filled with sketches, theories, and lists of things he must learn. From human anatomy to how birds fly, mathematician Srinivasa Ramanujan scribbled proofs on any scrap of paper he could find, often without fully explaining them. Psychologists studying creative cognition note that this compulsive documentation acts like an external hard drive for the brain. The genius mind generates ideas faster than it can process them, so archiving becomes essential. The irony? Many of these notes are never revisited. It's as if the act of recording them is enough to quiet the brain until the next storm of thoughts arrives. If you've ever filled a notebook with grand plans only to forget them the next day, congratulations, you're halfway to historical genius status. Number one, the reverse deadline trick. While the rest of the world panics at the last minute, some brilliant minds create fake urgency months in advance. Nobel Prize-winning physicist Richard Feynman often set his own false due dates, convincing himself a project was almost overdue when it wasn't. The pressure flipped his brain into overdrive, triggering a burst of focus long before the real deadline. Neuroscience calls this temporal construal manipulation, artificially shrinking perceived time to boost dopamine-driven motivation. It's a clever hack, but also risky. If you forget the deadline is fake, you might just burn out before the actual finish line. Still, for those who thrive on adrenaline, it's like building your own mental roller coaster and riding it on repeat. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.